How's it going, Rogues Gallery? And welcome to another Grand Archive video here on Red Zone Rogue. Today, well, it's been a little while since the last Grand Archive video, and I figured we should remedy that. So today, we're going to talk about all of the spoilers for the next set, Mortal Ambition, as well as drop a little announcement of some spoilers to, to be at the end of the video. Yes, I will be announcing... Well, I guess this already announces it. I'm gonna have a spoiler, yo, for, for Mortal Ambition, and I'll tell you when uh, to find it at, at the end. So, stay tuned. Okay, anyway, let's let's uh, go ahead and just immediately jump into this. Uh, we have Mortal Ambition product information. This is just a placeholder because we're actually gonna go over to Gabrary. This is a website that uh, compiles all of the spoilers and all that kind of stuff for Grand Archive, which is excellent. Um, but, well, I was gonna say more importantly, that that's it. The, the, this is where all the spoilers are. So if you want to go to Gabrary, it's like G-A-Brary, like a library dot net. And uh, there you go. Um, so before we do this, they have one spoiler that uh, they have not put up here yet. And that's this. Look at, look how cute this is. This is a Weaponsmith reprint in Mortal Ambition. So this isn't something that we've talked about yet, I don't think here on the channel, but Mortal Ambition is going to have um, meaningful reprints in the set at, I assume to be the same rarity because this is a Weaponsmith at uh, Common and we have had 100% confirmation from the Grand Archive team that Dungeon Guide is also getting reprinted in the set at Rare. So it seems like they're gonna keep the same rarity for the, for the most part. So this is, this is excellent. Um, look how cute this is though, Art by Gule. A good friend of mine and uh, someone that I will be working with more going forward, just for like Red Zone Rogue stuff. You'll you'll see you'll see as uh, as we approach 20k subs here. By the way, go 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 sub. We're like so close. We're so close. Just subscribe. It's like 60% of the people who watch aren't subscribed. Go go subscribe. But anyway, so here's the Weaponsmith um, reprint. I want to mention this in particular because we also have another reprint as well that we're going to talk about. But it, it um, they're going to have new art. Which makes sense because the art is going to be themed on the new um, the new world, right? Which is kind of like this, um, you know, this uh, Eastern Chinese Romance of the Three Kingdoms kind of vibe. And so they're all going to be, you know, featured as such. Whereas like Weaponsmith was a card that was first in like a very Arthurian kind of uh, set. So same with Dungeon Guide. I imagine we're going to get new art for Dungeon Guide. Probably very, you know, of, of the theme of the set, which is really cool. All right, so we have a lot of spoilers to talk about. Look at this. Look at all these spoilers. Um, and uh, yeah, let, let's just kind of like hop to it. Let, let's, um, I'll show off the other reprint first. So obviously, here's a reprint. This was shared on the official Grand Archive Twitter. This is Fairy Whispers. Look how beautiful this is. The art is so good. Grand Archive art is just like getting better and better. And it was already really, really good to begin with. But now it feels like they have their own like identity even when they go to these different worlds and this is just a gorgeous version of fairy whispers um might even be nicer than the new tristan one that I, though i personally tristan's my favorite character right now so probably going to be using the tristan one but this is absolutely beautiful once again at common so yeah very 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 nice um now let's just kind of go from the top from here and uh we have dragon's dawn now, this one is an ultra rare, and we have a couple ultra rares to talk about. Um, and we also have a new art treatment for some of these cards. So I do believe uh, Sitzacris said at, um, was it Ascent Chicago, that they want to spice up the booster pack opening experience for Grand Archive players to make special cards feel more special more regularly. But I'm kind of reading in between the lines with this part. It, it feels like they want to do that without making foils more common. And what they're going to be doing, this is not reading between the lines, what they're actually doing is this. And this is, um, they're doing like this full art frame break treatment for all of the ultra rares at like the, the base rarity. So all the ultra rares are going to look special no matter what. So when you open ultra rare, you know you hit a cool card. And then they're going to have additional treatments, right? foils, uh, collector rares, that kind of stuff. But this is the base rarity now, so you know that your ultra rares are special, which is really, really cool. Because before it was just kind of like, you know, you had like the orange or yellow letters at the bottom and that was it. Um, well, let's talk about this card. 
So this is Dragon's Dawn. It is a two attack, three durabilia, durabilia, durability, regalia weapon, warrior polearm. It has a cost of one. It says as additional cost to materialize this card, banish three fire element cards from your graveyard. So it kind of has that fire banishing type mechanic class bonus. So warrior uh, on attack, you may discard a fire element card and have Dragon's Dawn deal two unpreventable damage to your champion. But if you do, this attack gets plus two and on champion hit, draw a card. This seems insanely good. So basically you're just kind of like banking um, a, a fire element card, perhaps one that has like floating memory or something. I definitely want more fire element cards that have floating memory so I can make use of them with my Korhazi Courier. But um, you do that, you take some damage, but you also deal a bonus damage and you get that uh, draw card, which is really, really nice. This seems this seems pretty strong with three durability to attack. Um, and just beautiful, beautiful artwork. All right, let's uh, let's close some of these other windows so I can make this a little bit more succinct with our second ultra rare. This is Sundering Moon. So this is another warrior pole arm. This is a zero cost wind um, uh, pole arm. One attack, two durability, regalia weapon, warrior pole arm. This is a Jin bonus or Jean. I'm gonna call him Jean. This is a Jean bonus. On enter, if you control two or more wind element allies, Sundering Moon gets plus one attack until end of turn. So it's an on enter until end of turn bonus attack. And then gene bonus for two, uh, return Sundering Moon to your material deck. Uh, prevent the next one damage that we dealt to target unit you control this turn. This card seems sick. I don't know if Grand Archive is at the point where this kind of grindy type card is gonna be really good, but it looks cool. And here we can see this, uh, like, like I said, the, the extended art frame break treatment on the ultra rares. And um, I like this card, I think it's really cool. You can attack with it. Um, at least once, which is kind of the idea, right? You attack with it once with that plus bonus, and then you return it back to your material deck. It only costs zero, so you can keep playing it over and over again. Um, and then you can, you know, get that value from preventing the damage and, and all that kind of stuff. Cool card. I like it. Next up, we have a bit, a bit of a departure. It's just a horse, dude. Not not even like a Uma Musume, like horse girl. It's just an actual just horse. Lumbering Steed. Four costs, three, three. Not bad. Hindered, enters rested, but you can pay two and give it plus one health until end of turn. It's a tamer animal horse, and we have been told that horses are a mechanic in the set. Horsemanship is real. So, yep, there we got Lumbering Horse. Next up, we have Nascent Barrier. Gorgeous artwork on this one. This is a two drop, fast, cleric spell reaction, class bonus. So this is a class bonus cleric spell. Yo. Arasana enjoyers <laughs> rejoice, <laughs> maybe. Um, prevent the next one plus level damage to be dealt to your champion this turn. So for two, that's not too bad. And then it has level three plus glimpse. So it directly um, synergizes with uh, Arasana because you definitely want to be glimpsing so you, so you can do your star call stuff. And it prevents some damage. So if you're playing this, um, you know, at level three, it prevents four damage for two at fast speed. You also get a glimpse. Is it good enough? I don't know, honestly. I think I think Arasana just really needs like more like two for ones and board wipe, so she just doesn't die to the billion wind allies just coming at her face. So or, or even water allies or even fire allies. All of the allies just run her over. Anyway, cool card though. Uncommon. Uh, next up, we have another really sick card. This is Fang of Dragon's Breath. So this is a one drop uh, Fantasia Warrior spell, pole arm weapon link, and the two. Ultra as we've seen so far are pole arms, which is really, really cool. So we have uh, this, this can link directly up with Dragon's Dawn. And it says linked weapon gets plus two. I, I just closed it, but I mean like it has a plus, it has two and then it gives itself plus two. So if you link it with this, it attacks for six, which is an insane number in Grand Archive. Uh, and it says gene bonus linked weapon has or linked object has you can um, tap it or activate it or whatever you want to call it remove a durability counter from the object deal two damage to target unit really cool i uh, remember in grand archive you do not have to activate or tap the weapon when you attack with it so you can attack with the weapon and then also do some bonus damage seems pretty cool uh, we have more fire we have lava soul tiger Four drop, five, five, really good stats, but it has pride three, boo. But it has class bonus. On enter, you can banish two fire element cards from your graveyard. So once again, we have that fire banishing mechanic. If you do, this loses pride until end of turn. So it's a four drop, five, five. So if you banish two, you can immediately crundle in with it. 
Not too bad, it's just an uncommon. I feel if you're playing some sort of limited format, this card's gonna be really good. Uh, it's a Tamer Beast Tiger. Tiger. Tiger, Tiger. Uh, next up we have this absolutely stunning, just, oh my god, dude. Um, Retai Guard, four drop, two four, class bonus, Equestrian. Now we have the horse, <laughs> the horses are here. Uh, as long as you control a horse ally, Retai Guard has Taunt and Vigor. So, um, pretty good. All right, it's pretty good. And the art, like, is just, dude, it's so good. The art in this set's going to be incredible. Dude, I can't, legitimately, I cannot wait to go to, like, Grand Archive tournaments and events and just see all of the cool art and banners and everything up. It's going to be really, it's going to be real good. Um, we'll close that. Now we have My Neck of the Woods, Assassin, Scorchfire, Assassin, 3-drop, 1-3, Assassin, Human Ally. Class bonus on attack, you can remove up to three prep counters from your champ. For each prep counter, move this way. This attack gets plus two. That seems really good, but also it seems like you can get blown out. Um, I don't know. This card doesn't... This card does not fit into the current, like, um, Fire Assassin list. Because it's not like, you know, it's not like a two drop that has two attack or something. It, it's like... It's, it's like a slow burn... Pun definitely intended. Like you need you need a lot of prep counters to to crundle on for seven, but if you do, you can also attack for seven. But um I would like to know it's on attack, and your opponent can definitely like prevent the damage or stop the attack, and then you're just real sad. I don't know. Seems cool though. Seems cool. Um next up we have oh god, this art and this is so good. Sword Saint of Everflame. We got Sword Saints. I think it's just a cool, it's just a cool thing. Four drop, three two. Okay, decent-ish stats, but not, you know, not where you want to be. It's not a three drop. This is a super rare though. Uh, it has it's a warrior human class bonus for two. Banishes from your graveyard. Target fire element weapon or ally gets plus two attack until end of turn. I think this card is sick. This is super cool. First of all, the art is absolutely gorgeous. S tier waifu character. But I also want to mention just like fire is an element that you want to have a lot of them in your in your graveyard and this one basically is like kind of like a floating memory thing that you want to discard this and then use it for later or play this and attack with it and then use it for later and what you do what you get for that well you get a nice little pump i don't know this seems cool but unfortunately it's only for warriors so no assassin shenanigans would i run this in fire assassin probably actually <laughs> probably um i don't know it's a four drop it's, it seems cool though i like this card a lot I like it a lot. Um, it's one of my favorite ones released so far. All right, let's throw some water. We have beautiful Burst Asunder, four drop, slow Cleric Mage spell. Class bonus, it costs two less to activate, so if your Cleric or Mage, it only costs two. Deal two damage to a unit. Then you may sacrifice any amount of Fractals. For each Fractal sacrifice this way, deal an additional two damage to that unit. This is like Fractal Burst, and that's pretty sick. I don't know, this seems like a really cool like finisher type card for a fractal deck where you just do some damage and then you just blow them up. At the lowest, like the bare minimum, it's a two drop deal two damage, which is like not too bad. Uh, and, and it just gets better from there. So I think people will play around with this card and I feel like it might end up winning games. So yeah, cool card. I like it. I like cards like that. Uh, next up, we have another absolutely gorgeous uh, artwork. This is like, people started seeing this art before they saw the, the card, and they were like, is this a new character? Is this a new, unique character? Maybe? We don't know. This is a um, fast activation. Wait, do we know? No, we don't know. We don't know. Different character. We'll talk about the other waifu next. This is Slipstream Vault. It's a two-cost, two cost fast activation ranger skill reaction. This, like, archer lady looks awesome. Uh, class bonus is card. Costs one less. To activate if you're if it targets a unique ally such as probably the character in the art like i said people are like oh is this is a new unique ally uh target ally you control becomes distant negate all card activations targeting it units stay distant until the end of their uh, control turn this card is sick so basically for one drop it's like protect your best dude this seems sick. this seems sick i don't know we water allies back on the table back on the menu boys I like it. Is it good enough? Make it distant and then also negate things targeting it? I don't know. I like it though. 
Uh, next up, we have some of the best art in the set so far. Sword Saint of Eventide. So this is our second Sword Saint. I'm all here for the Sword Saints. They all look... Dude, they, they all look absolutely amazing. They're so good. So this is a two-drop Sword Saint. 1-3, water. Uh, ally, warrior, human. On enter, look at the top card of your deck. You can put it in your graveyard, so it has like that self-mill synergy. Class bonus, as long as you have four or more water cards in your graveyard, she gets plus one. So she's a two-drop, <laughs> two-three. <laughs> um... But you need four. You need four water cards in your in your graveyard. But she's a two drop two three. That's insanely good rates in Grand Archive. Like three drop two threes is like good. Two drop two threes is like kind of kind of nuts. Is this card kind of nuts? The art is in. The art is like next level. I I need this as like a play. Dude, I'm trying to get rid of play mats, but I I need this as a play mat. I need this as a play mat. Is gorgeous and like foil. It's just a rare too. Once again. I'm all here for the Sword Saints. All about the Sword Saints. And we are talking about Fairy Whispers. This card is very, very cool. This is Razor Gale Calling. It's another Fantasia. This is a Cleric Spell Fantasia. Class bonus, so Cleric. Costs two less, so it's a two drop. Whenever you activate a Wind Element card, deal one damage to target champion. Hmm. Okay. People are going to make this deck. I feel like people are going to build around this deck and they're going to try to make it work. Is it going to work? I have no idea. Do I want it to work? Yeah, I kind of do. This, this is sick. This card's really cool. Um, the, the, the thing that comes to mind immediately is like spell boost in Shadowverse or like Storm in Magic where you just play a whole bunch of stuff and you just try to kill your opponent. If you have multiples of these, if you have like two of these, every wind element card you activate, deals two damage if you have three it's three like this seems pretty sweet and you do have that cleric class bonus but it doesn't have to be in cleric you can do this in like a mage deck for example i don't know this card seems sick it's just a common you play this in limited i mean obviously you can but like interesting i know there's going to be limited i don't think there's draft i think it's all sealed but like Build the Razor Gale Calling deck and sealed would be would go pretty hard. All right, now we have Cat Wild Growth Feline. Look how cute it is! A two drop, one two. Uh, tamer Animal Cat class bonus. Whenever another animal and or beast enters your field under your control, put a buff counter on Wild Growth Feline. Um, this also seems really strong. I'm not gonna lie. This, this actually seems quite quite strong. This is a this is a common. It's a one two for two. That whenever another animal or beast uh, enters the field, it gets a buff counter. It doesn't even say token, it just says animal or beast ally. So if you have something that can generate beasts or allies from token, like token generators or something like that, I don't know if that exists yet, but as someone who's played a, a billion card games, this is just kind of the things that I think about. And I know the, the Grand Archive devs have also played a billion card games, so, you know, I think we're very like-minded and I, I see this and I'm like, cards like this in Magic are very, very strong. Um, there's a lot of there's like deck archetypes in magic that have been very good traditionally over the years where it's like uh what's it called they're like dry it's like a one one for two whenever you play a non-green spell it gets a permanent plus one plus one counter or whatever or like or like mana gorge or hydra um i think this is good like big dudes in grand archive are, are kind of hard to get and like all you need is like one dude like and this is Fantastic. We already talked about how I think a, a, a two three for two is really strong. So if you play this and if you get at least one dude, it's really good. The the downside is Grand Archive allies are subject to attack at all times, and you're gonna need to protect your cat. Um this is like a kill on sight. Um so is it gonna be like super crazy out of control? Probably not. But is it going to be like really good kill on sight type card? Maybe. I think it's really good. I might be crazy, but I think it's really good. And then finally, we have the Cavalry. This card looks awesome. So, uh, Yunjo Cavalry. Three drop, two, three. Three drop, two, three. But this one is a three drop, two, three, like with more text, which is just really good. Like people sometimes just play three drop, two, threes with like no effects. This is a three drop, two, three. That also has class bonus range two. This is a ranger human, so ranger. And then also equestrian on enter. If you control a horse, it becomes distant. So if you have a horse, it's a three drop four three 
for the turn, which is insane rate. Yeah, this is just good. If you're playing wind allies and you're like a ranger, playing this card probably. <laughs> like, yeah, like people play like, uh, oh, what's it called? The, the, the two, three, the two, three assassin dude. Um, I don't know. This, this seems pretty good. So overall, so far, this set seems excellent. Um, I'm really, really excited for, um, you know, more spoilers to see more. My favorite cards so far are obviously the Sword Saints. Absolutely gorgeous cards with like awesome effects. I really, really like both of them. They are at different rarities, so it's not like an exact cycle. I, I hope to see a whole bunch of Sword Saints. Um, I hope to see like a unique one. Oh, that'd be so cool. Uh, so we have, uh, you know, obviously one at rare and one at super rare. And then, before we end this, let me drop a little announcement here. I have confirmed it with Siladar that I can announce this. So, yes, Red Zone Rogue will have an official Mortal Ambition spoiler. It's going to be on September 17th, and I usually publish my videos at, like, 7 a.m. Pacific uh, Standard Time. So it'll be 7 uh, a.m. PST on September 17th. I don't know what it is yet. So none of this is, like, it, like I've been hyping up these Sword Saints. Don't read into it. I have actually no idea. They have not shown me the card yet. So I'm really looking forward to it. They always give me really, really cool cards. Um, and so I, I, I honestly cannot wait. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, let me know what you think of these cards in the, the comments down below. And if you're watching this far, which you probably aren't, I'm probably talking to absolutely no one. But if you are, for some crazy reason, type something down below. Let's have, oh, you know what? Everyone type what you think the Grand Art Archive team is going to give me to spoil. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you my history of cards that I've spoiled for Grand Archive, because I've spoiled uh, a, a lot, actually. So the very first card I spoiled was um, my own card, Kohazi Courier. And then I also spoiled Merlin, like the level two Merlin Memory Thief. So I spoiled those cards for um, Dawn of Ashes, and then for Fractured Crown, I spoiled the Fractured Crown, as well as um, Arthur. I'm mean, not Arthur, um, um, Uther. And then for Alchemical Revolution, oh, I spoiled a lot for ALC. Because I did, um, they gave me Crimson Tear was my like my first like spoiler, which, oh god, Crimson Tear is so good. As well as like some support stuff for Crimson Tear. Um, but I also spoiled uh, the Elysian Astrolabe and Scry the Stars. Um... So I spoiled a lot for that that set, and then for um, uh, Mercurial Heart, I ended up I spoiled um, Final Stroke and some other support stuff for that. So this has been a mix, lots of fire stuff, but not all fire. I got I had some like cleric stuff. I have I've had spoiled multiple ultra rares, but also some super rares, um, and, I'll, and you know a lot of the cards. So if you're watching this far. Or drop a guess yeah i'm sure i'm sure uh Solidar and the grand archive team would uh have fun reading all that stuff so thanks for watching everyone i appreciate you and uh appreciate all the support for the grand archive content basically all, all of the all the content and all the support is beyond appreciated so yeah cool also i'm going to going to the uh sent singapore too okay bye